In this review, we will explain the basics of completing a titration, examine calculations for titrating a strong acid with a strong base, and vice versa. And we will also examine how to create a basic and acidic solution, and the techniques used to standardize these solutions. Simply stated, titration is a common laboratory technique to determine the molarity or concentration of a solution. In this review, we will examine the techniques for determining the molarity of a strong acid or basic solution via a neutralization reaction. A burette is the workhorse for titrations, and it will be used to deliver the titrant to the analyte for these neutralization reactions. An example neutralization reaction that could use this experimental setup is hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, which can be rewritten in a simplified form. When moles acid equal moles base, then we are at the equivalence point or stoichiometric point, and that will be a pH of 7 if a strong acid and strong base undergo a neutralization reaction. The end point of a titration is when a color change is observed by an indicator. The trick is to have the indicator change color at or near the pH of the equivalence point. A common indicator used for titrations of strong acids and bases is phenolphthalein, which is inexpensive, stable, and undergoes color change at approximately pH 8 to 10. Phenolphthalein is clear in acid and a bright magenta red in base. The color change is due to structural changes as base reacts with phenolphthalein. As soon as excess base is present, the central carbon atom changes hybridization from sp3 to sp2, allowing for a different extended pi system, which is responsible for the observed color change. If a strong acid is titrated with a strong base, a big change in pH will occur near the equivalence point. In other words, just a single drop of titrant will cause a change of several pH units. This can be seen here on this pH curve where strong base is being added to a strong acid and the pH recorded. At the heart of all titrations are stoichiometric calculations. Typically there are four values that are variables and you will be given three of them, either directly or indirectly, and ask for the fourth. For example, if you are given a molarity and volume of a base that was added to a volume of acid, then you will be asked what is the molarity of the acid. Again, given three or four variables and asked for the fourth. In this example, the molarity and volume of base can be converted to moles base, which are equal to moles acid at the equivalence point. Thus, with moles acid and volume acid known, the molarity of acid can be calculated. Again, we see here that the key is moles acid equals moles base at the equivalence point. So let's work several examples to demonstrate these principles. In this example problem, we are given grams of potassium hydroxide diluted to 50 milliliters being titrated with 1.82 molar nitric acid. And we are asked how many milliliters acid are required to completely neutralize the basic solution. As always, I like to diagram out what is given and asked to better visualize the problem. Next, I write out important equilibria with what is given and asked under each reactant as shown. Converting grams KOH to moles KOH allows one to deduce moles nitric acid required for this neutralization, which is the same value due to the one-to-one -one stoichiometry. We now know moles and molarity of nitric acid. Thus, we can rearrange our molarity relationship and solve for volume of nitric acid required in liters, followed by conversion to milliliters. Again, we see the key to these calculations is the stoichiometric relationship between acid and base at the equivalence point. In this example problem, we are asked to deduce the molarity of the barium hydroxide solution given the volume and concentration of acid required to complete the neutralization. As always, I like to diagram out what is given and asked to better visualize the problem. And next, I write out important equilibria with what is given and asked under each reactant as shown. Converting volume and concentration to moles nitric acid required for this neutralization will allow one to deduce moles barium hydroxide present. 
In this neutralization reaction, two moles of nitric acid are required to neutralize one mole of barium hydroxide. Thus, there are 0.00615 mole of barium hydroxide within the 47.5 milliliter aliquot. Thus, with moles and volume known for barium hydroxide, the final molarity may be calculated. Again, we see the key to these calculations is the stoichiometric relationship between acid and base at the equivalence point. The next skill we will examine with acid-base titrations is the technique to standardize a strong base with the aid of the solid monoprotic acid KHP. When an acid or base is standardized, it simply means we know its concentration to at least the thousandths place or more. Once a base is standardized, it can be used to titrate and standardize an acid. As we will see, the key to this calculation will be the one-to-one -one stoichiometry of acid and base. First, we need to make 500 milliliters of an approximate 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Recalling our molarity equation and expanding moles within the numerator allows us to calculate that approximately 3 grams of solid NaOH are required to make 500 milliliters of a 0.15 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Once a 500 milliliter volumetric flask is obtained, we will fill it halfway with distilled water. Add the 3 grams of solid sodium hydroxide, swirl to dissolve completely, cool if necessary, and dilute to the lime. The NaOH solution is added to a burette and the tip is flushed to remove any air bubbles. The next step is to perform a pre-titration calculation to figure out approximately how many grams KHP are needed to ensure three sig figs past the decimal point when standardizing the sodium hydroxide solution. For example, if we add only 8.5 milliliters of titrant to reach the equivalence point, then only two significant figures will be used within the standardization calculation. However, if we add more than 10 milliliters, then we will ensure three sig figs within our standardization calculation. So let's base our calculation on adding 15 milliliters of the approximate 0.15 molar sodium hydroxide solution to ensure three sig figs. This means we will deliver approximately 0 0.00225 moles of base, which means we need that many moles KHP, the acid. Converting 0 0.00225 moles KHP to grams KHP indicates we need to weigh out approximately 0.459 grams of KHP. With the 0.459 gram amount as our guide, 0.462 grams was the actual amount used when the experiment was performed, or 0.002266 mole KHP present. With the 0.462 grams KHP dissolved in a minimal amount of water and three drops of indicator added, the titration was performed. A total of 15.3 milliliters of base were required to get to the endpoint when the color changed, which can also be assumed to be the stoichiometric point for strong acid, strong base titration. Remember that when at the equivalence point, moles acid in the beaker of KHP will equal moles base added via the burette. Thus, there are 0.00226 mole of base per the 15.3 milliliter of base delivered, which yields the final molarity of 0.148 molar sodium hydroxide. Now that our base is standardized, in other words, the sodium hydroxide molarity is known accurately, here to the thousandths place, we can now use it to titrate and standardize an acid solution. So maybe in our lab we need 500 milliliters of approximately 0.15 molar hydrochloric acid solution standardized. Well, first, we would make the approximate 0.15 molar solution of HCl by diluting a 12 molar stock solution of HCl. The M1V1 equals M2V2 calculation indicates that if we dilute 6.3 milliliters 
of the 12 molar stock HCL to 500 milliliters, the concentration will be approximately 0.15 molar. Thus, we obtain a 500 milliliter volumetric flask, fill halfway with distilled water, add the 6.3 milliliters of 12 molar HCL carefully, cool if necessary, and dilute to the lime. Now we remove a 25 milliliter aliquot of the approximate 0.15 molar solution of HCL, transfer to a beaker, add a few drops of indicator, and begin the titration with the standardized NaOH. When the experiment was completed, a total of 25.8 milliliters of base were added, which is easily converted to moles of base added, 0.00382 mole sodium hydroxide. If 0.00382 mole of base were added, then 0.00382 mole of acid were present in the 25.0 milliliter aliquot of acid, because at the equivalence point, moles base equals moles acid. If 0.00382 mole of acid were present in the 25.0 milliliter aliquot of acid, then the molarity can be calculated which is 0.153 molar. At this point, let's review what we have accomplished. We made 500 milliliters of an approximate 0.15 molar NaOH solution, and we standardized it against a known amount of KHP, which was experimentally found to be 0.148 molar sodium hydroxide. We then prepared an approximate 0.15 molar solution of acid, and an aliquot of this was standardized with the basic solution of known molarity. The acid solution was found to be 0.153 molar upon standardization. As one can imagine, once a basic solution is standardized, it can be used to standardize any acidic solution. And once an acidic solution is standardized, it can be used to standardize any other basic solution.